Good morning, Greenspring. Almost everybody here at Greenspring, I, I suspect, knows Clint Lambert. If you don't know him, you know of him. Uh, he's been a resident since 2008. He was the president of a resident council for three turbulent years, ending last December. His wife, Vicki, uh, was chair of the Resident Life Committee. He's also a host on Channel 6 uh, for other council, or for the Council Village in Motion shows and sometimes for other uh, uh, hosting, other uh, Village in Motion shows. So maybe it's time that we learn a little bit more about Clint Lambert. First of all, you look too young to have come to Greenspring <laughs> eight years ago. We see you in the halls with your young grandson, who's the age of my great-grandchildren. Tell us about your immediate family. <laughs> It's interesting she started. <laughs> I love you, Gray. <laughs> interesting she started that out with the fact that I'm too young to be at Greenspring, um, and when Vicky and I moved in eight years ago, we got told that all the time. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, since that time, my hair has turned a little bit lighter, yeah. uh, and I, I don't get to hear that too often these days. But uh, I get to hear it because people always are talking about Hunter and the fact that he's a new resident and he's too young to move in. Uh, he's three years old. He is our one and only grandchild. And uh, we love him to death, as you would suspect. Our, we have one daughter uh, and a son-in-law who live in Burke and with Hunter. And it's only, they're only six miles away. They're close enough, but not too, not too close. And so uh, we have an opportunity to babysit him in the evenings periodically. He's in daycare during the day. Um, so. Uh, well, that's great. Yeah, you know, that works out well. But uh, Vicki and I believe in the one child policy. We have one daughter. Vicky's an only child. Huh. Uh, our son-in-law is an only child. Uh, his mother is, excuse me, his father is an only child. And so we have a family of only children. And I, I have one sister and uh, our son-in-law's uh, mother has one brother. So, uh, Boy. you know, we, we have this large extended family that we get all into to our minivan when they come to town. Yeah, but you know, you've got to have at least two children to continue. <laughs> The, the, well, the race and you know, uh, uh, just having one that just doesn't hack it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Tell, tell us where you were born and a little bit about your parents. Uh. Sure, I was, I was born in Tallahassee, Florida, uh, and uh, had a wonderful childhood. You should uh, have a very tanned face, I would think. Now, would remember, Tallahassee is North Florida. Oh, it is okay. not South Florida. Oh. Uh, it uh, gets a lot of uh, sunshine, but it's got tremendous amount of humidity, oh. and so. Uh, you go out and, and make sure you have a dry shirt when you come back to change into. But uh, I, my parents um, were from the area. Uh, my father grew up on a farm in Havana, Florida, and um, then was a truck driver all my life. Uh, he worked for REA Express. And uh, my mother was a school teacher. Uh, ah. And she <clears throat> retired, um, I think, with 45 years. I think that's how many years she had of teaching school. I used to spend a lot of time in, in school waiting for her to, to get out uh, so we could go home. We, I went to the same school that she taught in for my first five years of life, of school life, and uh, enjoyed it. Uh, my mother uh, was an excellent teacher, was one of the outstanding teachers in the state of Florida, and uh, had a master's degree. Oh. And uh, unfortunately, she was an Alzheimer's victim, oh. and so... Uh, we lost her um, about 10 years ago uh, yeah. in regards to that. Well, I assume then that if, if your mother was a teacher in your elementary school, you were probably the teacher's pet, right? Uh, sometimes I was, but more often I was in trouble. Oh, is that right? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I had this habit of not wanting to keep my mouth shut uh -oh. uh, when other people were talking or when, uh, when I was bored. And so uh, I had the uh, honor of being under the teacher's desk my first year of, of, of grade school. Under the teacher's desk? Under the teacher's desk. She used to put me down there so I wouldn't get any attention from everybody else. So that's what I was getting by, by talking. So she stuck me under her desk. And she forgot that she had the old type of tie-up shoe, the uh, uh -huh. lace type. Well, those laces would come untied. <laughs> and I had to tie them back up somehow. That's so why I just tied them together. I see. <laughs> and so um, many times... Uh, <clears throat> she would have difficulty getting up and walking around uh, in regards to that. You, you did that more than once? I did that more than once. Oh, Why? yes. Yeah, yeah I, I, sometimes I don't learn from my mistakes. Surely there must have been the consequence. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the principal's office writing, I will not, <laughs> I will no longer <laughs> you know, do things. So, uh, interesting background. Well, uh, you, uh, in, in, uh, 
high school, I, I presume high school, you had a science fair project. Yes. That was a very interesting yeah. one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I um, entered the science fair when I was in high school, and all of us that were taking science courses were encouraged to do a science fair project. And <clears throat> I decided to see if I could induce ulcers in white rats. And I successfully did that. I uh, had a uh, cage with uh, electric shock that they got every time they tried to get something to eat. Mm. And uh, so it stressed them out, and uh, they got all evidence of developing ulcers uh, in their stomachs. So, uh, Well, did you get any, anything from that? I, I did. I had the opportunity of meeting um, Werner Braun, von Braun. What did uh, he have to do with he was our guest speaker, and he presented special awards for the winners of the science fair. Oh. And so I had the opportunity, if I had wanted it at that moment, to go spend the summer with him in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, but uh, like so many other things in life, you can always find something else to do as a young person rather than doing those things that would probably help you in the end. And I, I decided to do something else that summer. Well, what else were you doing? I was. Uh, Raising show cattle uh, and, and hogs and, and chickens, uh, and just really enjoyed that. I was on the 4-H uh, judging team. Uh, well, that, 4-H is for the farmers' kids, right? Right. Well, you were you a farmers' kid and living in Jacksonville? No, oh, no, I lived in Tallahassee. I mean, uh, that's okay. Jackson, Jacksonville's a hundred uh, miles <laughs> the other way. <laughs> but uh, that's a long name, anyway. Yeah, right. It's one of those names in Florida. No, I uh, grew up on. Uh, about eight acres of, of dirt, uh, okay. uh, and my father uh, had grown up on a large uh, southern farm, and he just loved to plow up dirt, uh -huh. and he loved to plant things and have me take care of his plantings. Uh, so uh, I did a lot of that in the summertime. And so you got into the 4-H, did that do anything for you? 4-H yeah. really did a lot for me. I, I really credited it, uh, the entire program with 4-H of directing my life and getting me on the right track. Yeah. I had a severe stuttering problem uh, early in my life. My father was a stutterer. And so uh, the county extension agent, which in all the counties at that time, was the individual that was in charge of 4-H clubs. And he said, I'm going to help you stop stuttering. And so he worked with me very diligently. And being on the judging team, I was judging cows and chickens and pigs and hogs and um, various animals. And at the end of each time you judged, you had to explain why you placed that animal the way that you did. And so I had to learn not to stutter. I mean, yeah. and I had to really concentrate. So he had me to slow down my speech pattern and to really concentrate on what I was doing and not to feel so anxious about standing up in front of people. Mm. And I really credit him with directing my life. It's interesting, you know, that, that there are things that happen in our early lives that that we can look back on and say that, that really made a difference yes. in my life. Yes. I, I can look at back on a couple of things, mm. and uh, so and it's. I think it's good to be able to do that. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. What about sports? Did you get involved in sports in high school? Uh, I uh, <clears throat> tried to get involved in, in sports in high school. I uh, was on the junior varsity football team and played middle linebacker uh -huh. uh, on the junior varsity. Unfortunately, we played a game in Donaldsonville, Georgia, uh, and the boys were a lot bigger than I was. Uh -huh. um, and I wound up with a severe concussion uh, out of that game, and so that was the end of my participating in, in football, but it led to me being uh, the trainer and the manager for the team. Mm. And so uh, I really enjoyed that, and eventually that led to me having an interest in health care. Was that the first time you really did something that, in, uh, that caused you to have an interest in health care? It really was yeah. uh, in regards to that. As far as my activity, uh, <clears throat> I'd had some illnesses, various illnesses, and I was always fascinated with what was going on um, from a health care standpoint. Well, do you have any special stories about college? Special stories about college. Let's see, where should we start? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> Developed an interest in, in politics while I was in college uh -huh. and uh, was on the election committee for the uh, student body. I was hoping to eventually become the president of the student body, but that did not pan out uh, in regards to it. But I <clears throat> really developed an interest in, in what was going on with politics, and to this day, I, I'm always interested in what's happening in politics. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if we call it politics now or just you know, bashing one another uh, in regards to things, but. Uh, 
that led to, to some opportunities of meeting different people and doing different things. Now, you, what did you, uh, you, you studied in, in, what did you study? What, was your major, what were you majoring in? I had a double major in biology and anthropology with minors in chemistry and religion. Oh. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the reason for the biology was that I was actually a pre-med student at that point in time mm -hmm. and was looking at going into medical school. I uh, fortunately decided not to do that. I decided I wanted a life uh, and didn't want to have it taken care of by, by everybody else's needs and uh, decided to go into nursing instead of, of going into oh. to the medical profession as such. Now, the, the, well, the biology, of course, was for the pre-med. For pre-med, correct. When did you decide to go into nursing? I actually decided to go into nursing when I was uh, in the Air Force. Oh. Uh, oh. And, uh, well, how did you get in the Air Force? This, this, <laughs> well, that's, no, let's go back to just, we, you had biology and anthropology. Right. And a, what is anthropology? Anthropology is the study of man. Uh, okay. and, uh, physiology? Uh, phys, no, physiology is, is under, would come under biology. But uh, anthropology, be forensic anthropology, to look at the, the development of cultures, the development of, of uh, uh -oh. speech, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, the... Uh, patterns of, of uh, designs that people use to make uh, pottery, uh, kinds of things that people eat, all of that goes into anthropology. Oh, okay. okay, let's go now back to the Air Force. Okay. I presume you were in the ROTC program in college? Yes, I had two years of ROTC, of Air Force ROTC okay. in college. Um, <clears throat> I did not uh, elect to finish out uh, all four years with ROTC in college. It was a mandatory two years uh, to take. But it uh, gave me an interest of, of going into the military and doing some things. I also had an uncle that was a uh, Navy uh, P-3 pilot, and uh, I really admired him and the things he did and <clears throat> developed that interest. When I graduated from, from college, uh, I had a, an uncle that was on the, on the draft board, and <laughs> he uh, called me and said, uh, Clint, uh, you've got to make a decision and do something. Your name's coming up this week. Uh -huh. uh, now, the, what year is this? Ooh, uh, 62. Okay, this is before Vietnam, after Korea, so sort of in the in, the, in between. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, he said, you need to make a decision about what you're going to do. Uh, and uh, he said, if you don't go ahead and join, you're going to get drafted. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, thanks a lot. Yeah. And so I went on to a delayed enlistment program. Okay. Uh, and uh, by doing that, it uh, postponed the time that I'd have to go in, gave me time to apply for, for officer training school. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> the issue was is that I had a degree uh, that allowed me to be a medical technician, technologist. And so I was working in, a, uh, in managing a medical lab in St. Petersburg, Florida. Mm -hmm. And my time came up. I still had not been selected for officer training school. Uh, I went in and, and did basic, and the, the <clears throat> Air Force kept on telling me, you know, we're keeping your name on the, on the list. We're still evaluating, uh, deciding when we're going to pull different people in for different things. And finally, one day, they called me in and said, you know, you've been sitting here doing nothing, basically, uh, on officer train on uh, OTS hole. They said, you know, why don't you take a bypass specialist test and get out of here and go to work and. The, and then you can reapply and do some things. So I did that, um, passed the officer, I mean, passed the uh, bypass specialist test as a medical technologist. And uh, then uh, my first assignment was here in Andrews Air Force Base. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, however, I went up to, on the ward one day to draw blood. I was uh, the lead uh, phlebotomist, and that's the person that draws blood. That's what the phlebotomist oh. is. And, uh, I came back down to the lab and everybody was saying sayonara. And I said, what, what is, why are you guys t saying sayonara? And they said, well, you just got orders. <laughs> You're going to Japan. And uh -huh. so I said, oh, thanks a lot. And so I uh, wound up in uh, Tachikawa, Japan. Uh, and during that time... <clears throat> That's just south of Tokyo, right? Correct. Okay. Exactly. Hmm. Uh, and uh, during that time, I still had my... Uh, application in for OTS, uh, finally got final rejection based on the fact that I was not a pilot and not a navigator and I was colorblind. 
Okay. Uh, so I couldn't be a pilot, uh, couldn't be a navigator because of my color blindness and, and wearing glasses. And uh, the only thing that the Air Force at that time was uh, bringing in as officers were pilots and navigators and engineers, and I did not have an en engineering degree. Oh. Now, I, my guess is that this uh, experience in the Air Force sort of led you into a desire to be a nurse? Uh, it did. I uh, wound up running into a um, Navy recruiter uh, ah. one night in one of the local establishments outside the base <laughs> <laughs> and uh, got recruited to, uh, to be a Navy nurse and said, you know, the world's wide open. Uh, nursing is wide open in the Navy. Oh. We need uh, people that really enjoy being in the military and uh, that are dedicated to the health care. Uh, come on over. Uh, and I said, what do you mean come on over? And they said, well, you can do a, a one minute to one minute transfer from one service to the other and um, we'll get you everything set up. So I said, oh, okay. And so that's what happened as I literally uh, switched from the Air Force to the Navy uh, and uh, then spent, I had spent four years in the Air Force. I wound up spending 10 years in the Navy. And uh, did really- Did they give you, did the Navy give you the uh, uh, nurse training? Uh, what they did is that they allowed me to go to school for two years yeah. uh, in nursing I, because I already had a college degree. Case Western Reserve in Cleveland, Ohio had a special program that was a two-year program for individuals who had already had degrees in other disciplines. And uh, I graduated after two years um, as a nurse and was commissioned six months before I graduated. Uh, oh, good. So um, it worked out really well in regards to that. So did you work on uh, hospital ships or on bases? Or? Oh, I was totally land-based. Land uh, okay. And uh, my experience in the Navy uh, led to me working in, in psychiatric units uh, and uh, orthopedic units with a lot of individuals who had psychiatric problems. Uh, the individuals who uh, decided that they, their motorcycle could climb a telephone pole or you know, things like this on a Saturday night. Uh, and so it <laughs> allowed me to, to really learn the traumas that individuals go through, the traumas, the um, post-traumatic stress disorders that people have uh, from being in war zones. and really developed an interest in saying, this is something I really would like to, to learn more about. <clears throat> the Navy then allowed me to apply uh, for graduate school oh. and um, then actually paid for, for my graduate school uh, in nursing and, and I got a degree in psychiatric mental health oh, uh, okay. nursing. So, uh, so that was a master's in, in a master's, correct. Okay. Uh, now, you went into the Air Force after the... Uh, did you go directly from the Navy into the Air Force? Or? No, Air Force is first. I'm, I don't then, mean Air Force. I mean Army. Yeah. I went from Air Force I, to, I, to I Navy. I getting this yeah, I, That's next okay. <laughs> <laughs> I went from Air Force to Navy and then from Navy to, to, Army. to Army and uh, literally did a one-minute to one-minute transfer in the middle of the weapons station oh. uh, in Alameda uh, Naval Air Station, California. And uh, it was very fortunate to, to do that to my... Uh, best friend at the time and next door neighbor. Uh, we lived on base in Alameda. And, uh, when were you in Alameda? Poor little, you were asking me these dates, thanks. Um, 1980? Oh, okay. 78, 80. Oh. Uh, but uh, really uh, enjoyed uh, you know, getting to know him and everything. And uh, the reason for doing it at midnight uh, was that the Navy would not release me early and the Army did not want me to have two masters at the same time because they knew I was driving from, from California to Georgia where I was going to be assigned at, at Fort Gordon. Uh, and uh, so nobody wanted me to, to be hurt because if you got killed or you got hurt, then who's, who was responsible, uh, you know, type of thing. But um, <clears throat> signed the, the uh, agreement to transfer at midnight and left immediately to go to Georgia and uh, wound up working in psychiatric mental health. and. Really enjoyed that. I uh, yeah. took a uh, certification exam, which it, the uh, nurse course still does. The nurses do uh, worldwide now, uh, where you become certified uh, as a specialist in mental health. Um, and that allowed me to set up a private practice. That allowed me to get reimbursed um, from um, Medicare and from insurance companies uh, for seeing individuals. And so when I had spent my 20 years in the military between the three services, I got out and set up a private practice and uh, 
very lucrative practice and thoroughly enjoyed it. Good. Well, we've left out a very important part of it. Mm. When and where did you meet Vicki? And... Okay. <laughs> yeah, for those that don't know, Vicki is my wife. <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I thought everybody knew that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and couldn't be happier. Vicki and I actually met in Case Western Reserve in, okay. in school. Uh, Vicki was getting her master's degree when I was getting my third undergraduate degree being in nursing. Uh, and she actually was one of my teachers uh, for, a oh, period, right? for a period of time. And so I decided, you know. Usually it's the yeah, other way around. Right. right. <laughs> so, the, male, uh, the male teacher marries a. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. this way it was, a, it was a female teacher married there, the male student. There we go. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, what, what I didn't share with you is the fact all of the, that my class were prior, uh, had prior degrees from other disciplines. And so we were an older group of individuals. We had more experiences sure. you know, going on. And uh, so Vicki and I were very, very close in age. I still harass her that she's a cougar. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's actually a, a, a year and one week older than I am. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but uh, we, we met there and uh, just had fun. We, we started out as being really good friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, led to marriage, and and uh, our ch our daughter was married, was uh, born in Cleveland, and uh, we just loved the experience all the way around. Good, we're down to five minutes. Mm. You talk a lot, the plan. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you, you told me to talk. <laughs> all right. Well, you've got a PhD. Now, yes. you're, you're out of the Army. You're, you've got your own practice. Mm -hmm. uh, you've, got a do you've got a family. Yes. And you get your PhD. It yes. seems to me that's kind of difficult, uh, working it in. How'd you do it? Uh, a lot of studying. I, yeah, I'm sure you did. Yeah. I decided I didn't, didn't want the military to pay for it. Uh, and so uh, I actually took my, signed up for my very first, first course after being accepted at uh, University of Maryland. Uh, so you're living up here now? Yes. Okay. Um, and um, that, the reason for that is I was stationed at Walter Reed. That was my last assignment. Oh, okay. I was at Walter Reed where I was in, had a uh, psychiatric unit and uh, was in, in charge of psychiatric rehabilitation uh, mm -hmm. for the Army. But um, it was my last assignment. And so I had applied for, for doctoral study. I was accepted at, at Maryland. And uh, this... As soon as I got out, I, I was able to, to get in school. That was my first semester. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I had to kind of postpone things. My father uh, died basically immediately after I got out, of, out and uh, I had some health issues as well in regards to it. So pushed everything back another semester before I really got involved with, with the doctoral program. But uh, successfully completed in uh, five years. and. Uh, Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I uh, got a uh, PhD in, in nursing administration as far as a, a focus area, and uh, it has really come in handy over the years. And what is always interesting about it is having a PhD, regardless of who has a PhD, PhD, it's entitled to being called doctor. I mean, that's just the way of the world. Uh, and just like somebody has a, an EDD, which is an educational uh, doctorate, same thing. They are a doctor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, medical doctors are doctors also, but they are medical doctors by training, whereas the other PhDs are doctor by educational experiences and, and um, type of things. So it's always interesting of who gets called doctor and who doesn't get called doctor. <laughs> but uh, it came in very handy with my private practice uh, in Georgia. I had uh, very lucrative practice and uh, very successful practice. But just what was your practice? I had a mental health counseling practice uh, where I saw individuals in hospital and homes and nursing homes. Uh, I would go into physicians' offices if they would call me to come over and evaluate somebody. I saw uh, anyway from children to to geriatrics uh, with the practice. Did a lot of family. Uh, and uh, individual counseling, a lot of couples counseling, and uh, just you now, and you you had that business from the time you uh, retired from the army until you retired from doing that. That right. was that was your yeah that was your business. Yeah. Now, as a, did you get? Have you done any publications? Have you had any publications that? Uh, yeah, Vicky and I have uh, always enjoyed working together and right. writing together, and uh, we uh, have published five textbooks. Uh, oh boy. And, yeah, and in, uh, in, in, in nursing, psychiatric in nursing, nursing, right? And um, no, in uh, nursing, uh, more psychosocial kinds kinds of things uh -huh. uh, in regards to it, uh, and 
that has led us to having other opportunities in nursing world world right world right why I did that yeah <laughs> say that again Clint um, well, the, oh so then you, you probably have done some traveling in connection with your work too yes we have um, after we retired uh, Vicky retired uh, in 2000 uh, and I, I retired just before Actually, Vicky retired in 2001, effectively 2001. I retired in 2000 uh, at Thanksgiving. And um, we had the opportunity to <clears throat> go and work for the Japanese government oh. for two years. And we, I taught psychiatric mental health, and Vicky taught um, some other nursing courses. And we lived in an um, ex-president's um, Japanese home with rice uh, walls and uh, oh tatami mats on the floor, yeah. and just had a great experience of those two years, which led then to us being able to consult and, and work and visit with other places around the world. Yeah. Um, and so we wound up spending uh, five years with three months a year in China, mainland China, ah. and then five years of three months a year in, in Thailand. Well, that's the royal crest of Thailand you're wearing on your shirt. Yes, this is the royal crest of, of the king of Thailand. Oh, the king of the Thailand. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, the yellow, uh, or you could say gold yeah. uh, in, in Thailand, uh, is his color. And so it trumps all, everything else uh, in regards to uh, wear. Okay, Clint, we're down. We're, we're, we're almost out of time. Mm. You came to Greenspring. Yes. How did you pick Greenspring? Actually, our daughter told us the next time we, we moved to please consider moving into a CCRC. Oh, and after she your daughter to, told you that? Yeah. Oh. And so after she explained to us what a CCRC is, uh, we said, sure. And so we came out and did one of the uh, come visit us, uh, have lunch on us type sure. situation. Honestly, fell in love with it as soon as we walked in the door. Um, oh. We said, this is where we want to go. And so long story short, uh, we moved in uh, the 5th of May of 2008 and have been here ever since. And have enjoyed the security of living here and the opportunity to walk out, lock your door, and know everything's going to be taken care of. Well, Greenspring is better off for you having been here. Well, thank you. I, I and, hope so. Well, not only that, but, you know, the more I've heard about your life, the more I admire you, Clint. Well, thank you. You, you really have had a, a great life, and uh, I think you're a wonderful guy. So thank you very much for ap appearing on the show today and telling Greenspring about Clint Lambert. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. You're welcome. And Greenspring, it's time for a couple of announcements.